Okay. Uh, moving on here. Um, let's, let's go in a different direction now. Um, th- this is. I want to return here. This is. This is an excerpt from a new book that's coming out that I. I want to. I want to dive into you with you guys. I have not read this yet. I've been aware of this book coming out for some time, and my number one question with it is, what the fuck is this about? And I'm hoping that you know, with with Matt and Virgil on my side here, we can we can parse <laughs> the meaning of this. Gabo is way. coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we yeah. We, we can get to the bottom of this. I, I'm talking, of all course, right, about our... All right. our good, Let's put on our detective caps. Uh, it's our good friend, Matt Iglesias, who has a new book Ooh. out. He has a new book out called um, One Billion Americans, The Case for Thinking Bigger. And there is an excerpt what? of this in New York Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> We're not thinking big enough. We need one... Yeah. One, one billion? That's too many. What are you talking about? <laughs> So is one, one billion to not big enough? Should I be thinking bigger than a billion? One trillion I, Americans. I could barely conceive of a billion. I don't think it's actually possible for a human being to fully imagine a billion of something. Guys, I got to tell you, I don't think there are enough chicken tenders hypothetically possible on this planet to feed a billion Americans. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is an excerpt of uh, Maddie's new book, uh, One Billion Americans, uh, that was uh, written in New York Magazine last week. And uh, like I said, I, I have only glanced at this because like my, I, I just like when I started to start reading it, I felt like, you know, a, a, a robot that had been put in some sort of logic. It loop. sounds like it sounds like he wrote this book after getting into a long late night Twitter feud with a third world Maoist <laughs> and now he's just like upping the ante on the other side saying, oh, you want you want a, 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 a dictatorship of the third world proletariat in the United States? Well, guess what? I think there should be a billion Americans, motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck you! I mean, I think it's like the, the funny thing about Matt is that uh, Matty uh, rather is that he's uh, he's worn a lot of hats. Um, in, in the various books he's published, he's, he's sort of he's he's done the garb of an expert in a number of different topics. And, I'm th- and, I, and Matt, I think you're right that this this book is sort of an attempt to synthesize all of those sort of like uh, wonkish enthusiasms that he takes up as hobbies to write it. Like, you know, he was a defense policy expert for a while. Then he was a yep. housing expert mm. for a while. He yep. started out as a business and fucking markets yep. guy for slave yeah. or whatever. Um, so like th- this new book, it's like, I, that, it's just, like that old Daily Show joke where all the correspondents, when they would do a correspondence segment uh, that was like a talking head segment, they would get like you know like a, a, a fake expert title, and it was always different every time. Yeah, like senior also, by the pod analysis or whatever. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. By the way, um, Chris, when does this episode come out? Like every episode we ever do, the same day that we record it. <laughs> like what time? I don't know, like nine. Okay, then this isn't relevant. <laughs> okay, all but, right. I don't know. Maybe you, Bill and Ted is on sci-fi right now, <laughs> but that's not, this information oh, isn't going to okay, be useful great. to the listener. First, look, say that will... shit for your OnlyFans, please. If you want to tell people <laughs> on your OnlyFans what is on the TV that you're looking at at the moment that you're typing it, then you know, keep that shit there. All right. Okay. All right, fine. All right, uh, we're talking just, about the I'll... case for adding 672 million more Americans by Matthew Iglesias. Like I said, mm-hmm. I, I have... I have not read this yet. I don't get it, and I'm I'm just I'm hoping I need I need your guys' help here. I, I, what to make of this? Yeah. What what point is he is he like what what what's going on here? Uh, so I'm just going to start reading here. The United States is not full. In fact, it is empty <laughs> right now. The country has about 93 people per square mile. Many many countries are far denser than this, and not just city states like Singapore or small island nations like Malta. South Korea has 1,337 people per square mile, and Belgium has 976. If you tripled the population of the United States, adding new Americans only to the lower 48 and leaving Alaska and Hawaii intact and unchanged, the main part of America would be only about as dense as France and less than half as dense as Germany. A transformation on that scale is almost impossible to imagine, in large part because of the American political system has fallen into a state of torpor and dysfunction driven by, among other things, the absence of the shared sense of purpose that once bound the national experiment. But while contemporary politics is terrifying in certain ways, it has also opened up again the possibility of goals and projects and ideas, probably the biggest opportunity in a generation for new ideas to take hold. So here is one big one, a billion Americans. And this gives us a new shared sense of purpose. Well, because he wants the Rocky Mountains to be as densely populated as Queens. I, I, I think I think he's sort of trying to give like a like a nationalist gloss to like his sort of uh, sort of yimby urbanist 
sort of like he like his whole thing is like he, he's really into zoning laws and he he wants more high density like zoning to be available in cities oh, like Jesus San Francisco Christ. and oh, elsewhere because he's just like like that's that's what's causing you know homelessness or whatever. Um, so but like I think he's yeah he's trying to give a kind of yeah like a grand national purpose or something like and then uh some sort of a uh, yeah some sort of mission that will compete with I I. I think what he imagines is the yeah the coming blood and soil nationalism of you know white man's America or and fuck everyone else, but um, let's see where else he goes with this. When America faced down Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union, we were the big dog. We had more people, more wealth, and more industrial capacity. But against China, we are the little dog. They don't. There are more than one billion of them, and about three hundred and thirty million of us. Uh, Chinese people don't need to become as rich as Americans for China's overall econ economy to outweigh ours. If they manage to become about half as rich as we are on a per, per person basis, like the Bahamas or Spain, then their economy would be far larger than ours in the aggregate. The, our, the Earth would also be uh, non-existent. It would be <laughs> Venus. <laughs> you know that's going to happen, right? If, if, you, if like, you're assuming that we're just going to be competing with each other like along the current uh, consumption <laughs> matrix with with China and India that there's no there's no planet. So I I think I think this is his hook here for like how do I get sort of like uh like y Yimby uh zoning deregulation fascination how do I give that into like a grand national context and I think the answer is uh China has more people than America therefore if if every Chinese person fought every American person they would win. If there were a big rumble between America and China, I mean, like once our once our A team gets taken out, you know, they've got hundreds of millions more to go. That did this happen is, uh, in India earlier this year. That giant rumble in the in the mountains. Oh right, between yeah. the Indian and the Chinese army, where they were all using rebar and shit on each other, and they were just tumbling off into the abyss. This I is mean, I like to see it. That's for sure. This is even more shame. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you're just imagining the the India China clash as like a fucking gently movie. <laughs> This is more shameless and, frankly, more dumb than the idea of a missile gap. We have a people gap with China. <laughs> and, that, you know, like, uh, you know, it, it won't take the average Chinese person getting that much more wealthy to have their own domestic consumer market and then, you know, recall all our debt and fucking sink this fucking country. So, I mean, that's that, in the long term, you know, if, if conditions maintaining themselves yeah like right now china needs us because we supply the market for their stuff if, if they were able to create a like a a fully sustained internal domestic consumer economy we would not be as necessary and our position to them vis-a-vis -vis, you know global geopolitics would be way reduced uh but that ignores two things one our military and two that the earth would be a fucking cinder if that happened like we'll talking here. about this shit like this and just assuming away the reality of the fucking scarcity that we're and, and, and the environmental uh, you know feedback loop that we're in right now. It just shows these guys are it, it, because it seems so huge and because the solutions are not small bore. We can't fucking, uh, you know, zone our way out of the climate crisis. They, ah. they, they, they just cl cling to I'm going to get something that's equally bold and, and conversation starting. <laughs> But just assumes away the fundamental political and, and ecological constraint we're currently challenged with. Uh, it goes here. Conservatives argue that the country can't take more immigrants, that it should effectively close its borders or at the very least restrict immigration to a trickle. Progressives tend to disagree, even while being inclined to say they, that the particular towns and cities they live in should be preserved as is, opposing any further real estate development as pernicious disruption. Meanwhile, America's birth rate has slipped to a historic low, and nobody in the political mainstream seems to think we can or should do anything about it. But a three-to-one advantage in population is really hard to overcome. Thankfully, tripling the size of the nation is something that is in our power to achieve. It would just require more immigrants and more programs to support people who want to have additional children. Of course, if we had a lot more people, we'd need to adjust a number of other things to make sure they had jobs and places to live. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Might want to get okay. on that. Okay. Housing shortages are common in many parts of the country, but the tools to surmount them are easily available. And oh, like, okay. Like, here's this here's the switch. Okay. And like immigration would cost taxpayers nothing. 
providing adequate leave for America's families by offering not just paid leave, but financial assistance, preschool and aftercare services, reasonable summer programming and affordable college for all qualified students. Oh yeah, students. we should do that. That sounds would cost good. money, we should do all that but stuff. it would also, but it would greatly benefit America's children and make it much easier for middle class people to have the number of kids they say they want. Well, why don't we just do those things and just like not uh, try to triple our population while we're doing it? I mean... It just seems well, we, to me like he's advocating for like, you know, yeah, we, we, it should be easier for people to form families and we should have like a less restrictive immigration policy. What's this shit about how we need 672 million more people? Because the reasoning, the argument for these other things is that we should not have an economy that is entirely dominated by fucking profit and by exploitation and that it, def it, de it deforms and demeans human life to the extent that people literally don't want to continue and they don't feel that they can continue the cycle of human reaper fucking duck shit because they don't have the social infrastructure to allow it to, uh, to, allow it to, be, uh, to thrive. And... The answers to those are the, those answers aren't answers Iglesias wants, so he needs to give it some sort of gloss that that is as titanic as like the question of challenging capitalism, but is but is not as like danger endangering of the fundamentals that he cherishes. So it's got to be turned into a nationalist contest that we can win. Well, here, here's another problem that I that I see with this. Maybe maybe he addresses this later in the article. I don't know, but like he begins by comparing like, hey, like. In terms of people per square mile, like we're we're not we're, like there's almost no one in America. Like whereas look at Belgium and Spain or whatever. I mean, like and America is a vastly larger country in terms of space, but like yeah, like he's right. Most people aren't living in in most of the places in this country, and that is a problem that can, seems to be accelerating because all of the jobs that are fucking like livable are in the cities. Like you have to leave. Like small towns are dying because people are leaving them to go to more populated areas. And so it just seems to me like I. Would these 672 new billion or this, this new billion Americans like would would their population be evenly spread out over the Great Plains and big sky states like Montana or Idaho? Or would New York, L.A. and Chicago just become like mega city one? Because like that doesn't seem very livable or sustainable to me if there was like, you know, if New York City had an, I don't know, an additional hundred million people living in it. <laughs> also, by the way, turning, you know, turning our uh our agricultural breadbasket into uh, housing also has its own potential downsides to, you know, producing food for humans to eat. Uh, this no, I think we should have people move to where the agriculture is happening. That can't go wrong. <laughs> we should empty the cities. <laughs> I mean, if he if he really wants to go like Pol Pot here, I would at least find that interesting, and I would find it more more worthy of engagement with than whatever this shit is. Uh, the next sentence is, is is this is the perfect Matt Iglesias sentence here. These challenges may seem complicated, but really they are not. <laughs> oh, cool! Oh, cool! <laughs> <laughs> the solution to America's new urban housing crisis is to build more houses so more people can move. Oh my God! Cities. This guy is he's like one of those fucking junkies at the Port Authority. But for upzoning, <laughs> the solution like this is like this is his cock and bull story that he tells you about why he needs the money is like, oh, I need uh, uh, like 650 million more Americans. So like, no, he said he said then he like, goes and he spends it on upzoning. No, no, but he's saying like that, that these problems could be solved by just um, making it so we can build more housing in in demand cities. But like this gets to exactly the point I'm talking about, like this new massive population is not going to be evenly spread over the. American continent so that people can live, you know, with a, a, a certain modicum of, I don't know, privacy or, or open space or whatever. No, what he's saying is that, like, look, uh, you know, our population per square mile, if you average it overall, wouldn't have to come up that much to make this possible. But the populations of places like New York or any major urban center would have to increase by, like, I don't know, 10,000 percent. You're forgetting so about the programs, though. There'll be more social programs. So, so we'll create, like, a nightmare of anime. <laughs> and social conflict, there'll be, there'll be programs. Well, it says here, the solution to the illegal immigration crisis is to let more people come legally. Americans of virtually all stripes may look like a threat to some xenophobic Americans, but they make native-born Americans richer and fuel the kind of innovation that can help the country grow. But America's vast rural hinterland and many of its aging northeastern and midwestern cities need an influx of people to prevent their current priceless assets, i.e. their real estate, from wasting away over the next generation. And America's families need help from a more robust welfare state in order to be able to have and raise children with a secure middle-class lifestyle. 
For a long time, our politics has treated these patterns as part of a puzzle that don't quite fit together. More immigration is good, but the cities immigrants tend to move to already don't have enough housing. More housing is good, but that might only exacerbate rural depopulation. And if sane, humane child and family policy gives us more people, sane, humane immigration policy also gives us more people. If declining areas need more people, but expensive areas also need more housing, then the, the solution to the puzzle is that we should just do it all. Okay. And yeah, I mean, and the, peop- the, um, the citizens who are here are going to do that and say yes to that because they're not going to see this huge influx of immigrants as a, as a threat to them as economic competitors because we're going to be doing all, the, all this other stuff about what was that Matt? about i don't know making uh what what exactly does matt say about making it easier for people to already live in this fucking country without spending every minute of their life on a fucking hamster wheel that they're uh, not going to the see this millions of immigrants is just more people who might take bread out of their mouths this uh, zero sum nightmare that we live in is he going to do anything about that I just searched the article for the word union, and it only appears in the phrase Soviet Union and European Union. Okay. All right. I got it. So it says here, admittedly, admittedly, this, it sounds a little loopy, but while some left-wing intellectuals might suggest that the end of American hegemony would be desirable, I've never heard an elected official from either party articulate that view. And America should aspire to be the greatest nation on earth. In part, that's because our main rival is not something cuddly like a hypothetical version of the European Union or a non-hierarchical world, but the People's Republic of China. Nothing country- cuddlier than the, uh, the place that's just drowning thousands of people in the Mediterranean on a daily basis at this point. Uh, a country that is aggressively using its commercial clout to try to silence critics abroad, conducting egregious human rights abuses against its Uyghur minority, and cracking down on freedoms in Hong Kong. What the fuck is being the greatest country in the world mean? Like we have to, like that should be, he's basically saying, he's not even saying we need a billion Americans. He's saying we've needed a billion Americans as part of this, sub, as, as, a, as a subsidiary part of the greater project of becoming, of being the greatest nation in the world. What does that mean? What does it mean to be the greatest nation in the world? I mean, it means to be the most powerful nation. And what kind of competitive framework does that assume? And how does that competitive framework uh, jibe with the fact that if we keep competing with with each other across national lines, as I keep saying, this world is gone, at least in any uh, recognizable or desirable form that we might want to uh, imagine for the future, that we might want to, I don't know, reproduce enough to have a billion people to see. Does he answer any of those questions? I, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip ahead here to the end because he, he goes on for a long time and I, I just, I don't, I don't want to fucking... Oh, he does shout out Matt and Elizabeth Brunig's family fun pack and the People's Policy It's project. good policy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like again, it, it just seems like he's... Uh, he thinks that you're going to get he's, the family he's, he's, fun pack. He thinks he's going to get the family fun pack by telling people we need a billion Americans and this is how. He thinks that's the most compelling uh, framework for that because like <laughs> that's got to be the point of this, right? Why you write a book like that? It's not like yeah. it's going to matter in any meaningful right. sense. Uh, no, very few people are going to read it. The hope is that if enough people of influence read it, that it shapes the discourse and it becomes an influential element within like, the political strategy of the parties. Uh, and so that's, that's why it's relevant. And so when he says we need X, Y, and Z as part of it, like the family fun pack, then he's kind of implicitly saying that this is how you sell that. A billion Americans is the best way to tell people uh, that we should have a family fun pack, not we should have a family fun pack because you should be able to raise a fucking family in this country. But no, like, we need like that. We need the moral... family fun pack because because China will have an even funner family pack. Yeah, see, because he has to strip morality out of the entire equation of politics. Otherwise, his entire premise is dog shit and rotten and monstrous. And so um, it has to be reframed as a utilitarian international relations chess move instead of like the minimum requirement to consider yourself being a fucking society. And also what's, 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 what's going unsaid here in this sort of like we need to compete with the one billion red Chinese or whatever is that like he, he, he's saying that like, oh, we can do that and not suffer any sort of uh, uh, drop in our own quality of life that we've come to expect. Like he, yeah. he's like, oh, no, like all, all that that we consider our birthright as Americans will re- essentially remain untouched. And in fact, it's going to get better if there are 672 million people extra in this country. You will live in a Fuddruckers. You won't even have to go to one. There will be someone in your kitchen making you Fuddruckers. I'm picturing a 1960s ad man writing on a whiteboard the word million, crossing out the M, putting a B. (laughs) And everyone loses their shit. A billion Americans. What does it say to you? 
<laughs> now, here's what here's what's interesting to me. Uh, you know, obviously this is all this is all just like dumb bullshit. But Matt's writing this out of his yimby compulsion. Like this is all this is all his the 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 culmination of his master scheme to upzone neighborhoods, which I don't get. Because I get being a NIMBY, right? It's like, I don't want to live next door to the garbage factory. Right. Yeah. No, no shit. Nobody wants to do that. Okay. And I get, you know, uh, being, having like, like, like a, a, a socialist-minded housing policy, having, having uh, you know, mass, you know, uh, public housing that's, you know, that's decent and livable. Because, uh, one, you probably want to live there yourself. And two, like, this is, this is a moral, rational thing to do, to have a collective solution to the problem of homelessness. The Yimby shit is straight up just, you know, I think my building should have, I think my neighborhood should have more tall buildings. Like, you walk around, like, do, do these people, does Matt walk around the fucking foggy bottom where the fuck he lives? And I think it's DuPont Circle. Do, yeah, DuPont, him, that's a guess. Yeah, DuPont Circle. Does he, he seems does he, like that type. Does he walk around and when he sees one of these, like, hideous fucking, you know, eight-story, you know, gentrifying buildings... Like, does he just like you know get a hard on? Well, no, Matt. Well, I, I think Matty would walk around and he thinks he thinks they should be way more than eight stories because DC does have that idiotic zoning rule that no building can be taller than the Washington Monument, which yeah, is sure, largely fine. why it is a, a a hideous, awful, well, awful city. Uh, I think uh, Virgil, you you bang on a you have you have uh, identified here a crucial difference between the liberal and the socialist critique of capitalism. Uh, the socialist critique of capitalism is that it is anti-human, is that it is, it is a moral obscenity because it makes us act immorally. Like, I mean, obviously you can say that that's not very ideal. I'm not, that's not materialistic. I'm talking about the way we express it through politics, the way we express it in our conception of the good. Is in moral terms. It has to be. You can argue about where those moral terms come from, but they, it has to be a moral objection. That's the only thing that makes sense. The liberal objection to ca capitalism is that it's not efficient. And for Maddie and for Yimby types, the problem of homelessness is not a moral obscenity. It is a it is a annoying inefficiency created by outmoded systems of 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 not capitalism, but of of like culturally reproduced capitalism that need to be changed by by people. And, and they get to imagine themselves as progressive because those efficiencies that they imagine include things like, hey, maybe there shouldn't be giant uh, encampments of homeless people everywhere uh, because now those people can efficiently uh, contribute to the marketplace instead of having their, their labor, their potential labor power just wasted like that because of our, of our inefficient distribution of housing resources. I agree that it begins with an interest in efficiency, but I think yimbyism becomes pathology over time. Oh, absolutely. And maybe that comes from just like arguing with people on the internet and being That's afraid. exactly where it comes from because if you have to keep reasserting it, you have to keep creating more broke and delusional justifications for your own belief system even though they're it's just the thin reed of self-interest like i would like more fa places in my neighborhood please it becomes this titanic representation of like of of not only your own virtue but human virtue because you spend all that time arguing with people every other point along it and having to defend it and create mental architecture to defend the, your idea so that you don't ever confront the basis for it. I'm saying it also adjusts their sense of pleasure. Yes. That they genuinely do feel a, a, a certain jouissance when they see some fucking, you know, developer's ugly fucking overpriced building. Yeah, they get they get a charge out of it because they've charged it. They've charged it by th by that, like, it's a ritual incantation. And it just charged their yimdiness with that jouissance, with that erotic frisson, because it's part of their their political war. And war Virgil. is a force, folks. But here's my, but here, Virgil, oh, I, wait, I, ima I imagine Yimby people when they see like a, a sort of aerial shots of the island of Manhattan being like, this is good, but that giant green thing in the middle of the island, could we have more <laughs> housing there? Could we just like, all that land is being, uh, not being put to its best use. Can we just fill it all in with buildings? Let's Wouldn't that build, make everyone's quality of life better? Let's have in, in just the middle of a fucking Nebraska cornfield that matchstick building. <laughs> just just oh, plop yeah, it in there like you're playing SimCity <laughs> with all the 
fucking you you did the cheat to unlock uh, every fucking building. The, the arcologies. Actually, we should actually honestly, <laughs> what my actual like solution to these future crises and population arcologies, issues, baby. building arcologies. That's my actual. Uh, oh well, that would this. be cool. I mean, that is actually the the culmination of a socialist housing project is something like that. Archons for arcologies. Uh, and that would yeah, be entertaining. I, I, do, I, do have another, I, I do have another point here. It's, Matt thinks that this is effective nationalist pandering. That's cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it no, really is funny. That, this is, this is really this funny. Is like, after watching, no, you're the fucking right. R, after watching the fucking RNC, the fucking, like, full Starship Troopers reality <laughs> that we live in, you're like, yeah, this is going to get the MAGA hat, the, the fucking Patriot rubes on my side. It's got no, triangulation. No, you're, exactly, you're, exactly, you're exactly right. And, and like, like he, he, he thinks that this is... Like this is the way that Democrats and liberals are going to get on board and have like a nationalist message that works for them, which just comes down to be like, hey, what if we had a we what if we had as many players as China has? What if we could field a basketball team that could uh, that was a billion strong? Yeah, like it's not like the the full motivation on the of the fucking nationalists is not just pure primal libidinal hatred. They're going to be swayed by your bar charts, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's what gets him off, though. That's that's where he's got the category confusion because he thinks anyone else is going to be persuaded by his clever, intricate, uh, small. But he thinks he's proposals. being clever here. He yeah. realizes not everybody gets off on the bar charts and thinks, ah, but a different bar chart must get. Surely yeah, that yeah. must arouse the other. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cl- I'm gonna finish out this piece. I'm skipping ahead to the last couple of paragraphs here. Does he still so, listen to this show? I Probably. hope so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny. customary when trying to talk to Americans. Uh, you know, it's customary when trying to talk Americans into daunting political problems to quote JFK on the subject of why go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon, he said. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because I am hard. <laughs> because I am hard. <laughs> because uh, by, so, uh, it's a great speech. That being said, it's worth emphasizing that while one billion Americans may be impossible and absurd, there's actually nothing hard about it. Letting more hardworking and talented foreign-born people move here is not hard. On the contrary, it's keeping people's it's keeping people out that's hard. Providing Yo, financial support so that Americans can have as many children as they say they'd like to is a big change, but there's nothing particularly difficult about it. Nothing particularly difficult, except it would involve passing legislation that literally no one in our government um, wants to yeah, touch with a it, fucking it would, it would only barge involve, pole. Yeah, it would be. All involve, these same. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't all these same people when you talk about Medicare for all just be like, "How are you going to get Mansion to vote for it?" Yep. Well, yeah. How the fuck? How, what, like, what, what, how are you going to get around no, the Senate for this one get, billion American plan? Well, this is how you get Mansion to read one billion Americans. Oh, okay, I honestly there we go. think that's his deep answer. You uh, get enough of these <laughs> elites. You get enough of the elites to read this thing, and then they will do the thing. They this all becomes the Daniel Patrick. This becomes here. the new uh, pedophile symbol that QAnon sees everywhere. Is all these senators walking around with a copy of this book? Yeah. <laughs> what could uh, a billion Americans mean? Why would they want a billion Americans? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> They're gonna eat them. It's like it's like at McDonald's. What billions serve? That's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> to serve one billion I mean, Americans. To serve one billion Americans. <laughs> but like, uh, that's because at, Matthew. At every, at every international airport, when you get off a plane, it's just you see you see a picture of the president, a picture of the head of Homeland Security, and then it just says America, <laughs> one billion people. Uh, but this, I think, the reason that he thinks that is a viable path forward is because he has this vision as a wonk, as a guy who has spent a time in Washington, of, of the long history of, of influential books and articles that have shaped American policy over the years. Yeah, and like the Moynihan Report. The, hey. Exactly. And what he doesn't get there, or he... Th- uh, uh, I mean, at least his public presentation of this case requires him to not get this, is that those things are not changing people's minds. What those, things, what those intellectual essays are doing is giving uh, politicians a political and intellectual justification for shit they were going to do anyway. And anything in his little fucking wish list that goes against capital is not going to be done, regardless of how many of these people read his fucking book. But if there's something in there that they can do that'll maybe like buy off a constituency for a while or convince people that they're actually accomplishing something, while really they're still fucking uh, strip mining everything to the bone and making the like flourishing that would requ- be required to have a billion people in this country even viable, uh, that's not happening. So his entire model is flawed at its foundation. Wasn't that literally a line from a Vonnegut story 
from the one uh, where everyone lives in this like tiny apartment that the one billionth American has been born. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's, you know that story about, about overcrowding in the future? Yeah. Um, okay. Like, that was a, the, the, this haunting line is the, the thesis of this book. Well, I mean, it's yeah. a haunting line because at the end of the day, like even if, even if, even if this plan uh, went according to uh, Maddie's vision and we had uh, more immigrants and a more generous social welfare state and, and you know, free education and we allowed people the economic freedom to uh, have as many children as they'd like to. At the end of the day, they're just going to turn into Americans. So I yeah. don't see this as a net benefit yeah. for either this country or the yep. world at this point. We would have to have a, we would have to as Americans have social values beyond consumption. And the thing is, that's not impossible, but that would actually require changing our relationship to each other and to fucking work and to production and to capital and to everything else at a, at a fundamental level that would that it could not be be solved by a national project that ignores all of the root fucking causes of the social alienation that turns us into a herd of of, of self seeking id driven uh, water buffaloes who which could oh. not fit on a billion of on any planet any any fucking planet let alone a continent. Uh, okay. there, here's here's a really good line. Here's a really good line. Sorry, I, I just got to get to this one. Letting builders make whatever kind of housing their customers want to buy is easy. Uh, he's talking about Grover House now. He's, he wants <laughs> he wants he wants a billion Grover houses all over America. Anyone who wants Yimbies to build a house, I bet you you can get to. Yimbies. You could get Yimbies to defend Grover House. <laughs> you would absolutely do that. They will fucking convince themselves that this actually looks good and is cool. This rocks. I want this in every fucking city. Uh, so I, would yeah, love, that, that, I would love a dozen Grover houses in my neighborhood. Shifting economic activity to places where land and buildings are cheap is a little more difficult, but it's hardly a voyage to the moon. Copying a... Tra Dude, settling Americans moon on the easy, moon is more idiot. realistic than this shit. Question. The moon was a technical <laughs> question. Once you fucking put the money to it, you just have to figure out how to do it. This, this you're is talking about convincing people to do something, do something as a collective project. That's insanely difficult. This is another really great line. This is another really perfect Iglesias line here. Copying a traffic management paradigm that Singapore implemented in the mid-70s oh, isn't hard at all. Nor Murgatroyd. is copying long-standing German co commuter rail practices. Hey, you know, Singapore, that country that's essentially a dictatorship? <laughs> yeah, it's been run by like one guy for the past 60 years. Well, he's gone now, but he left. His, his, his thing is intact. It's, it's, a, it's a managed democracy at its, like, its technological endpoint. Okay, so, so he says here, unless you're unless you're unless you are uh, unless the real answer to this is written in like invisible ink and you have to put it up to flame to read it and you're one of the Illuminati and this is actually a text telling you how to create like a, a totally foreclosed political elite that can rule through sheer technological uh, 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 force like like a biomechanical matrix, then this is not helpful for anybody. All right. Uh, this is a really good paragraph because he does. He does acknowledge some of the problems that oh, one billion like Americans might cause. So like, he says, of Someone course... should do something about all the problems. <laughs> of course, tripling the population could also cause a number of problems. Traffic jams could get worse. Rent <laughs> That's his first problem. People That's are the still first driving problem cars. you could think of. A billion Americans and we're still driving around in personal cars. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, again, again like, uh, yeah, uh, it's a billion Americans, but they're all still driving cars that run on gasoline. That's a fucking great idea. Uh, so it says here, uh, traffic could get worse, um, rent worse. could go up, water access would be stretched thinner, there'd oh, be, yeah. there'd be, be pollution. Issue. These are, unfortunately, real concerns. And the exact details <laughs> of how best to structure family support programs, how best to pay for them, exactly which additional immigrants to let in, and how to... Wait a second. Which so he's additional still, immigrants? He's still talking about <laughs> which additional immigrants? I thought he just said, let them everyone in. Are you want a billion oh. people or not? And There's he's still trying to look at people's resume and shit? What the that's fuck so is good. going that's, on here? That's, 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 that's the wonderful. classic, that's the red lib H1N1 uh, uh, shuffle. Or H one, it's not H one N one visa, right? Which the one, the H one uh, visa, the, the one for one of like those. Yeah. the ones that all that they stock uh, the, the Silicon coders. Valley with. Yeah, yeah, it's like you you pitch immigration on social justice grounds of saying people should be allowed in this country, but what you end up actually doing is just increasing skilled labor for industries that want cheaper labor. That's it. 
I just, and then I just love at the end of this. The fucking, he's, everyone else still gets to wait in line, and everyone else still gets to die in the fucking Mojave. He's talking about like uh, tripling America's population size, and again, he doesn't give a time frame for this. But what I would imagine it would, it would he'd want to do it sooner rather than later, you know, to compete with China or whatever. Uh, and he's still looking at fucking like people's CVs who want to get in the country. Like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Also, why are you I just deciding who to let in or not? Why not just let in everyone if this is the end goal that you're going for? I just had a thought. Because, you know, Matt started out mentioning the the population density of the united states has he factored into this the fact that in a few years we will literally have less land <laughs> that the land is currently eroding like entire yeah. communities are just just we've just given up on entire communities yeah you might want to ballpark just literally just picking up everyone and just moving them somewhere else yeah you might want to, to to subtract florida from the calculations he's got yeah, most of Louisiana, yeah, you know, yeah. just... So he goes here... Um, that's, that's, that's not a thing. So he goes, and how to improve our infrastructure and increase our housing stock are good subjects to argue about. I, I bet. guess th th that's, that's what it comes down to here. That's all Matt wants to talk about. These are the good subjects to argue about. But think about how much healthier our politics would be if there were really a debate about how to accomplish great things rather than a food fight over semi-imagined defenses to real Americans that serve as a mask for an endless procession of tax cuts for the rich. Why not make America greater than ever instead? Okay, I, I, it's like he just says, like, okay, yeah, there'd be problems, like water for everyone to drink, but he doesn't mention, like, what are the solutions to them. He just goes back to talking about tinkering with zoning laws. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, why not make America greater than ever instead? Again, this is... This is the liberal thing. This is the of, of just they're always fantasizing about the day in which they can be compete on the same fucking playing field as the right wing does with all of their fucking flag waving jingoist horseshit. You know, another great president, FDR, upzoned the Tennessee Valley. <laughs> <laughs> So he goes here, whatever liberals' misgivings about this national project, America should aspire to be the greatest nation on earth. Once again, meaningless. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Americans already think, and rightly so. Because well, not rightly means, so. What the fuck are you talking about? Forget. I mean, even if you were our, our uh, you know, we're all roughly the same age as Matt Iglesias, even just going yeah. on our lifetimes alone, what would fucking indicate to you that it's, it's right? Forget, forget the moral judgment aside about whether it's good or not to think that you live in the greatest nation on earth and it should always be that way. What give it, like, what on evidence? Could you muster to make that case that America, as it's existed over the last 40 or 50 years, is fucking the greatest nation on earth or has done things that would fucking warrant that title? Yeah. On Iglesias' own fucking terms. That's what, I, that's what I'm wondering. We're not doing great. We're doing it's pretty bad. We couldn't get people to wear masks to prevent the spread of a fucking <laughs> deadly infection. We couldn't get people to say, hey, maybe I wouldn't like my grandmother to die couldn't get that to happen and it's not i'm not blaming those people because there's a that's the end point that ridiculousness is the end result of a whole series of social pathologies which in my opinion add up to america not being the greatest anything <laughs> except maybe threat to the fucking future of the human race yeah that's it that that's what that's what they mean i think i think that answers your question matt what does it mean to be the greatest nation on earth it means to be the single greatest threat to um peace security and the future of everyone else on because the planet. that means you're in charge it means yep. you're at the top of the, po the totem pole and you get to order everybody else around that's that's what greatest has to mean i mean if you're if you're getting it beyond just pure ethereal bullshit it has to mean that and, and that and that implies a that implies a future that doesn't allow for any of uh, any kind of uh, population uh, um, war with, with China or anybody else ending with anything other than total systemic ecological uh, destabilization. And the, the country, that whatever social forms emerge from that, are not going to give a shit about Ma Matt Iglesias' fa fucking restaurant. They're going to plug him into a goddamn uh, uh, Skinner box to keep him rowing an oar. <laughs> so I just, I'm just finishing out here this is finishing out this excerpt it says rather than being paralyzed by racial panic eco-pessimism or paranoia about the loss of parking spaces we should try to think this stuff through calmly and systematically choosing to emulate our forefathers and mothers who managed to welcome millions of newcomers and ride ox carts across the Rocky Mountains to build the greatest nation in human history rather than throw up our hands at every moderately difficult logistical problem and whine that the country is full. 
I get I just love that he's talking about tripling the population of America as a moderately difficult logistical problem. Yeah, you know. Well, there's just there's just hundreds and hundreds of cascading subsidiary problems all of which are fixed right now in a pathological condition because of their relationship to capitalism that is in a steady uh, collapse of, of, of sustainability itself just on its own terms in terms of its profit uh, uh, rate return, that's going to be okay. That's no problem. We'll do it. And it all starts, it all starts with, uh, with Ben Sass reading this book. <laughs> it's, it's, that's, that's, that's the first domino in that domino meme. The first bat is, is Ben Sass picks up one billion Americans, and then the last one is the billionth American orders his first round of uh, Fundido dip. At, uh, the, at the fucking uh, Fuddruckers that is on the moon. <laughs> well, like I said, wouldn't just colonizing the moon be a better fucking uh, use of our time than this? Like I said, if it's yeah. a technical, any technical question is easier to solve than this shit, than getting people on board with like a broad program like that that didn't run, that ran counter to existing like uh, economic uh, conditions. There's water on the moon. <clears throat> I think so, yeah. There might be other stuff. I don't know. I've never uh, appraised the moon. Is there freaking cancel culture on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. The moon should just be like parlor, uh, but for reality. Yeah. You can just go to the moon now to like, you know, to say what you want to say and fucking, uh, you know. Are there Kardashians on the moon? Oh, God. There no, be any sign me up. Kardashians. Well, there you go. I, I still don't get it. I mean, I, I just, it was one of the most. You need to take some, uh, you need to go to uh, the Office of Management and Budget and take some salvia, and then you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. That, that, is, that is the case for one billion Americans, and I think the, 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 the underlying point is it's not that hard. It's well, fine. Come on. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it, guys. Billion Americans. Let's, let's, let's see. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's get, go, let's get it trending. Is this scene get, from hashtag uh, one billion Americans. The scene from uh, uh, Ferris Bueller where he goes to the museum and he's looking at the Surratt, but it's Matt Iglesias at the Congressional Budget Office. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, folks. One billion Americans. I mean, you know, just how about, how about one billion Chapo fans? That's, what yeah. I'm, that's the now world that's I'm a trying goal. to That's the now world that's I'm a goal. Now we're talking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>